There are probably two or three categories of highlights that I think are really exciting. The first was uh, if you look at newly diagnosed myeloma, I think there were a couple of landmark trials that were presented. The first was the IFM-DFCI trial that demonstrated with an RVD induction that transplant continues to show benefit with progression-free survival advantage and that in this trial, whether or not you had a transplant, 80% of patients were alive at three years. That's great news and that's, that just shows the power of having a planned treatment approach like the French did in this large randomized trial. The second is I think we saw the superiority of the IMID-PI combination for newly diagnosed myeloma. And in Europe that has traditionally been done with VTD, or tezomib, thalidomide, and dexamethasone. The French presented data on VTD versus VCD cyclophosphamide in combination with bortezomib and dex, and show that the VGPR, or better rate, after four cycles of induction, was much higher for the VTD group than the VCD. And finally, the U.S. finally did a large cooperative group trial in myeloma. Uh, the SWOG group did the 777 trial that looked at RVD versus RD, and showed not only a progression-free survival benefit, but an overall survival benefit for RVD. So I think RVD now becomes the de facto standard induction regimen, and if you're in a place that can't use lenalidomide in combination with bortezomib, then it becomes VTD. Those are sort of my opinions, if you will. I think um, in the new drug section, I think we were really excited to see data uh, on uh, daratumumab, which was also approved in the U.S. a couple weeks ago, uh, in combination with lenalidomide by Dr. Plesner and in combination with pomalidomide from Dr. Chari. And I can tell you, having treated over 20 patients with the POM-DARA combination, it's very, very active even in patients with high-risk myeloma. And I think sort of on the future horizon section uh, of drugs that are out there, uh, I think we're all very excited about the data that was presented this morning using pembrolizumab, the PD-1 antibody, in combination with both lenalidomide and pomalidomide, demonstrating the ability to overcome resistance to both of those drugs through the addition of this anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibody.